barn owls is that they are this natural predator for these prey, rodents, gophers, and voles, which can be really horrible pests for agriculture. Um, we have abnormally high densities of these rodents because of the landscape we've created. And so being able to bring a natural predator back in, barn owls can be very effective. They can actually drive the prey to extinction almost, or local extinction. They probably never would do that though because barn owls need more prey. They'll leave if the, all the prey is gone. So they're not always the only solution. So if you have a really um, environmental conditions that cause rodent populations to explode, barn owls probably would bring that population down over time in terms of years, but for a grower, they might not be able to sustain a rodent population that's exploding even for a couple months. So in that case, it might be that they do need to use other tools like rodenticides. And so we're hoping to be able to give some idea of what that impact will have on their kind of long-term solution in terms of the barn owls. So we're looking to figure out ways that farmers can utilize all the tools in their IPM tool chest. So rodenticides are a tool that are necessary. Barn owls can be a really effective tool and what we want to do is figure out a way that they can be used harmoniously without impacting the barn owls negatively. If we know that barn owls are more likely to be exposed in one season over the other, perhaps not using rodenticides in that season so that you're kind of minimizing that exposure and the potential negatives it can have on the owls. Owls, they often swallow their prey whole, bones, uh, fur, everything. And then the undigestible parts, so usually the bones and the fur, they cough back up like a cat would cough up a hairball, essentially. And so we can look under these boxes and it's like a little graveyard of skulls and femur bones and little pieces of their prey. And we can actually, what we do is dissect those pellets to understand what they've been eating. So we can get a really clear picture of the prey that they've been consuming. And we're, we're doing that as part of this project as well. So we're gonna be putting GPS tags on owls for about two weeks at a time, and then we'll put them on, reuse them on different owls. We're gonna be comparing where they hunt with what kind of prey they're bringing back to the nest. So we can see if they're hunting out in a vineyard and they're bringing gophers back, where they're going to get those gophers. And then whether or not they're hunting in areas that we know more rodenticides are being applied. And if we see that in the samples that we take for looking at rodenticides in, uh, in the chicks and in the adults as well. We're doing this over three years and we're hoping to be able to look at chicks this year and see how, how much they're recruited into the population over time and whether or not that's impacted by potential rodenticide exposure. The farmers that I was working with on other projects started asking me about these barn owls because we're not the reason these owl boxes are out here. It's not because of researchers. It's because farmers know that barn owls, they can see the graveyards underneath these nest boxes and they know that the barn owls are doing something for controlling the rodents in this landscape. So we're just out here trying to understand what the farmers already know is benefiting them because they would not be spending $250 a box in some cases to do nothing. They, they perceive that there is this benefit and we're trying to understand it better and figure out ways they can maximize that benefit. We are growing wine grapes here. Uh, my family has been growing wine grapes here since the late 70s and uh, have a winery we produce, we grow grapes and so uh, rodents are a big part of, of, a, of an integrated pest management program that we use here. We put an additional 20 boxes out, so we have 40 on the ranch now. And um, so for, for our point of view, uh, the rodent control is what we're after. And a and, and bigger part of having an integrated uh, system of biodiversity and, and Biological controls, non-chemical options for controlling these types of mm -hmm. these types of things, and so uh, habitat, creating these uh, nesting boxes, have have been very beneficial. And I've been very impressed by what they found in the boxes, the number of young owls that are, are constantly being hatched and laid, and and it's just really been an eye opener. And so we're just absolutely pleased with how it's going. Mm -hmm. The amount of numbers are, and. Um, Got to hold owls, and I never, you know, even thought about that. It was just so cool. And one fell asleep in my hand almost, and they, the girl said that that was unusual for that. So I was, you know, very connected, I guess, with them, and I thought that was very neat. And, you know, a big part of farming is being connected to the land, and, mm -hmm. and uh, so a lot, a lot of what we do goes into that. 
And I'm very interested in reducing chemical inputs into the, into our system. You know, looking at things as a whole holistic system, and being part of it. You know, wine grapes are very unnatural. Anything actually growing in these hills, that's not a <laughs> annual grass is very unnatural. So, um, you know, so these these systems we're trying to work within our agricultural monoculture in a lot of ways, and and move away from just being monoculture, having the biodiversity. And um, so it's a very exciting program. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are uh, definitely on board uh, moving forward and we want to do more habitats for hawks and other predators. Um, we are talking about coyotes earlier and they're a pest for us, but they're probably beneficial in a way too because they're eating a lot of the rodents and more rabbits maybe we're talking about that as being a pest, but they're, you know, it's part of a system. And so it's a tolerance thing. You know, we, we need to learn to be able to tolerate more and I was telling you, generationally with my dad in farming here, he's a lot less tolerance for things and he wants a very kept clean sort of environment and within nature. I've heard it said this way, there are no pests in nature, you know, so they're, everything's in, balance, in a balanced system. So balance is what we look for in, in, in wine quality, balanced shoot growth, balanced light exposure, balanced crop. And so part of, part of everything we're doing is striving for balance. And, and so... Uh, this really does work well into into our setup and we will put energy into it and and things that are looked off as and this is one thing of a cultural thinking of when you have an approach to an issue is it's a chemical first and and where an IPM program and then you know using a, a sustainability program where uh, uh, California uh, certified sustainable moving our, everything towards that so we're looking for biological controls with the chemical option being your least favorable but only necessity level so um, you know we're, we're not going to be organic we're not going to move towards that way to be certified but everything to do with the long-term health of our soil water and land is going to be definitely something that is going to be a high priority for us